Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And Today we come together as always in the day of the Lord to celebrate the Holy Eucharist as Christians have been doing for 2,000 years. But on this day, in a very special way, at this parish of the Holy Cross, we are celebrating the, the Feast of the Holy Cross, uh, which is uh, so very central to our life and sign of our faith and the, the way in which through our service of Christ the Lord crucified, we are what God wants us to be, we become what he wants us to be. And so uh, I'm very glad to be here at Holy Cross Parish uh, as I am uh, beginning my time in retirement. And I'm uh, Father Mark. Thank you, Reverend Father Thomas Collins. Thank you for coming to the Holy Cross Parish. May the parishioners and friends of Holy Cross Parish are delighted to welcome you here at Holy Cross. I will also like to welcome Father Despella for joining us with the best priest here on vacation. I will welcome uh, all of you. Thank you for coming. And please, Your Eminence, lead us in prayer at Mass. Thank you, Father As we prepare now to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. 
O God, who will that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant we pray that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. They spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that the many children of Israel died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make the poisonous serpent, and set it out on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made the serpent of bronze, and put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. Therefore God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Imitating in this world 
the love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In our world, the generous, sacrificial self-offering of self. And that is what we're called to do. It's what makes us who we're, we were made to be. We will only find peace in our lives when we live that way. Because too often, we worship the unholy trinity, a me, myself, and I. We go on together like that, and just as the black holes of space are so full of themselves that not even light escapes, we can be so full of ourselves that not even love escapes. And so we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and pray that we will not become egotistical little islands, and me, me, it's mine. Because when we do that, everything rips apart. We have discord, violence, hatred, rejection, loneliness. St. Augustine, who tried many wrong ways of living, he finally came by the great God's grace to see, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until we rest in you. And as we pray in the name of the Blessed Trinity and the love that we're called to show to one another day by day, we draw upon our bodies the sign of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because he showed us how, in this twisted world of ours, this selfish, violent, angry world of ours, how, what it looks like to live this way, not simply as God, but as one of us. As the second reading today speaks of the substance and meaning of the Feast of the Holy Cross, as well as the Blessed Trinity, says that the second person of the Blessed Trinity, living in that divine love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, did not cling to his equality with God. We always get in trouble when we cling, we hang on and grab. He did not, God doesn't do it. He did not cling to his equality with God. But he emptied himself, taking our life, even to death, even death on the cross. And so we draw upon our bodies the sign of the cross of Jesus Christ when we look at the one who shows us how in this sinful world to live in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and to love in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is the only way. And yet until we see him face to face and until we finally come to the heavenly city, Jerusalem, until that time, in this journey through this valley of tears, if we are living with love, we may very well face the same rejection Jesus did. The sign of the experience of the offering of the love of God on this earth in the midst of this twisted world, in this valley of tears, is that people get crucified like Jesus. And we think of all of our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, so many, 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 so many more now than the early days of the church who are being martyred for the Lord. Their fidelity to our Lord Jesus Christ and the sign of His Holy Cross is leading to many being killed, imprisoned, tortured, deprived of their liberties, thrown into prison, all because they are faithful to the Lord Jesus, our blessed Lord, and the sign of His cross, the sign of the love of God in this world, this twisted, darkened world. So we need to think of that. Jesus, as the second reading said, the substance of it all, that Almighty God Himself did not cling to this equality of God, but showed us how on this world to live generously, sacrificially, giving Himself in the midst of the world that says, gimme, 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 He gave away. He did not, when the world was saying, you know, crucify him, anger coming at him. He didn't throw anger back at them. And he didn't snap his fingers and blow them up either, which he could have done. But he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This is so true. So true in our profound reality of the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Lord on the cross. But it's so true in our own lives as well that really there is no alternative to leading a, leading a good life, of leading a life in that kind of generous love which the Lord offers to us. 
He says, repent, the kingdom of God is near at hand. Let's not get caught up in our own selfishness, pride, anger, envy, greed, laziness, lust, gluttony, all that garbage that clings to us. But just let us ourselves be in, as St. Paul says in the second reading today, let there be in you what is in Christ Jesus, who did not cling to his equality with God. So we need to have that. And it's very hard. I think of all the sins, the worst of the sins is pride. One of the hardest sins is anger. Because it, it takes over life. And usually we're correct in what we're angry about. We can stew over it. You know, I can prove that it's right. Yes, yes, look at this, I'll tell you. Okay, see so you prove. You're right. Well, what's the point? Our whole life. You know, it's right to be angry about things that are wrong, but when our heart is taken over by that kind of thing, the very opposite of that generous love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what a way to waste our life. Our life is short. Tick, tick, tick. Time is short. I'm realizing that now at 76, more than I did when I was 17. <laughs> you know, you get to see the end of the runway. It could be any time, you know? Oh my gosh. And so life is not, we don't have time in this brief journey through the Valley of Tears, to waste it in proving that I was right, or in getting angry at that person who did me wrong. I mean, you have to deal with them. I don't mean be naive. You've got to deal with whatever is there. One of the great difficult things is when we live in a way that is not accepting the cross of Christ in the proper way, our whole life is soured. And the person we're angry at, that, they, don't, they don't care. They didn't know about it. We're just being stewed with <laughs> acid. So, the only way is to live according to the substance of the cross of Jesus Christ, which is that generous sacrificial love, and it's the only way, and if only we would all do that, we would break the cycle of violence and so many other things. It is the, the way, and it's the markers that we see, oh my, they're so inspiring. Here in our country, in this country of ours, it's not likely at this point at least that we're going to be called to shed our blood for Christ. Uh, it might be in the future. Many, 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 many of our brothers and sisters are around the world. Here is pressure, suppression, not being able to express our faith and having all these little snarky attacks on the church and things like that. And so we have to just recognize we're in a different world, but it can be very difficult. Some people lose their jobs because of their fidelity to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're not far off. But whatever we need to do, we need to have that profound reverence for the sacrificial love that Jesus shows us on the cross. And the first reading in the Gospel today speak to us not only of the substance of the generous sacrificial love, which is the meaning of our life in Christ, which is what the cross represents, it's all about. But they speak of the sign of the cross, a very strange sign of the snake, a bronze serpent held up in the book of Numbers. It's a kind of an odd thing, but it was a way to take some symbol of what was causing the problem, the snakes were attacking them, and take the symbol of the hate of the enemy, and he showed it up, and then God used that instrument of evil to bring good, to bring healing. It's interesting. That's how God works that way. And if you think, well, we want, when we have the cross of Christ, we don't have a happy face on the cross. We have as our main symbol a sign of injustice, murder, and rejection. Because we know that is the world in which we're called to serve the Lord. And so that sign raised up in the Old Testament is a prefiguring and Jesus says to Nicodemus, you know, the sign Christ is being raised up on the cross as a, not just the substance of his love, but as a sign for us of what we're called to be. So we look to that too, and we think of that even as we begin the reading of the Holy Gospel. We make the sign of the cross on our forehead that we will know these words on our lips, that we will speak them on our hearts, that we will live them in the sign of the cross of Christ, to know, to speak, to live. And we think of that too in the symbols of our faith. This cross here that was given to me by St. John Paul II and the other bishops received at the time when we went many years ago. It's a 
cross is a sign of our life. Many of us wear little crosses or things, bishops have actual crosses, different types. It's a sign. It's good to have. Have a cross is a sign of what we're called to live a sacrificial life, not to just kind of get fucked in by this world. We're called to something. We're called to holiness, not to mediocrity, to holiness. And we must be gentle but ardent messengers of the gospel, living that way with gentle love in the midst of this world. And we think of the way in which the sign of the cross, not only the beginning of our prayers, but we are forgiven our sins when we turn into selfishness. The priest absolves us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by the sign of the cross of Christ. In that love, we have our freedom. In that love, we find our way forward. There are two different artistic images of the cross which are kind of interesting. I think they speak of something. If you look at most crosses, like in the stained glass window here, they're kind of the suffering of Christ. He's sort of like this, suffering, and rightly so. It is, we think of Good Friday. We think of the cross as at the top of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the fire of love, the cross of Christ, the suffering of Christ. But some of the earliest crosses, the Jesus is dressed like this in a chasuble. His arms straight up like that, with the victory of the cross, the triumph of the cross, and often wearing a crown. This is Matthew, Mark, and Luke speak of the suffering, the sweating of blood. That's so true. God's so close to us. But St. John speaks of the majesty of Christ on the cross. And that's so true as well. And so, the cross of victory, the cross of suffering, the cross of closeness, the cross of redemption. These two different ways show us that a couple of years ago when I was a university student, I, um, I studied Old English literature, and I highly recommend you read a, a beautiful poem written around the year 800 AD called The Dream of the Rood. R-O-O-D is just the word cross, the dream of the cross. And it imagines a cross of Christ with glory and diamonds and jewels, and suddenly the blood of the cross, the blood of Christ, did his suffering. Two of them together. So today we celebrate in this parish of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We reflect upon the meaning of, of that deep mystery. May we in our lives proudly show deeply within our hearts and in our lives and not just in our symbols, but show them as well the fidelity we have to the cross of Jesus Christ, the sign of his triumph over evil, the sign that is making present on this earth the generous love of the blessed trinity that we are all called to live. That's our hope, that's our future. The cross of Christ, the unique hope. That's what we need to do, not only to pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to live in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit through that generous love which Christ shows us through his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let us now join together in our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the might of the rest. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us pray in the name of our Savior for healing and forgiveness in the world, for peaceful times and for the needs of all people and the church.
for the church, called to be a community of God's unconditional forgiveness and love, and for the spiritual re renewal of all God's people through the sacrament of confession, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are shattered by hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and fires, especially in Morocco and Libya, and for the spiritual and economic reconstruction of communities and individuals affected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the will and the skill to choose the path of reconciliation over war, the path of justice over exploitation, and peace over violence and revenge, and for the unity and forgiveness among all disciples of Jesus and family members, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Joseph Cesar, John Krasinski, Gabriel Moore, Mary McDermott, Ryan Brown, and Marty Burnett. For those who pray constantly for them and those in need, and for the forgiveness of all debts and injuries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all who are dying today, that they may go to God's kingdom. For all who have died, especially Joe Fininsky, and for those for whom this mass is being offered, Giuseppe and Rosie and Bruno, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O merciful and forgiving God, and touch our hearts with grateful wonder at the tenderness of your forbearing love, that we may delight in the mercy that has found us and bring all to rejoice the feast of forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree. 
tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions and all and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs with humble praise as we have heard.
made the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray for all. Advances of peace and salvation of all the world. Be blessed to confirm in faith and charity. You proclaim church on earth is our servant, trans our hope, and the trans our bishop, the orders of the bishops of the clergy, and the head people you have gained for you all. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those who have redeemed by the wood of your life giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. If you would like to be seated, we'll have some of announcements. There will be a young adult mass this Tuesday at 7 p.m. at St. Joseph the Worker Parish, followed by a pub social at Riley's Pub. Second collection on September 23rd and 24th is for the needs of the Canadian Church. This collection is to help bishops in their ministry to teach, sanctify, and govern. Envelopes are located at the back of the church. There is early bird registration for the young adult conference called Renew. Father John Booth invites parishioners to take coffee or tea farewell next Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. at Harmony Creek Gold Center. If somebody of you is in university or going to college, or you have children or grandchildren in the University of College, there is a tool, it's called Chaplaincy Connect. It is to connect the students with their Catholic community at the University of College. We are looking for the volunteers who would like to be reader, Eucharistic ministers, a kind of legal collection. And since the season of uh, preparation for the First Communion Confirmation is also beginning, we are also inviting you, if you are interested, to help to volunteer also with RCIA. Uh, this moment I would also, instead of announcements down there in the hall, so that we don't wait too much, otherwise the workers will get cold and we won't avoid this at all costs. Uh, maybe I'll just say the announcements right now. So, dear Cardinal Collins, we are grateful for your faithful, prudent, and fruitful service to the Universal Church, especially as the Archbishop in the Archdiocese of Toronto. May our Lord Jesus continue to bless you abundantly in your life and ministry. Thank you to the Sacristan Paul and other servers. Well done, boys. And thank you to Sarah, uh, to Kim and Michael, to the videographers, also to our secretary Sarah and Michael the custodian, to Frank, Mina and Clark. A big thank you to the choir uh, led by Renaldo and Karen for beautiful singing. Thank you to the Knights of Columbus and the Catholic Women's League of Holy Cross Parish for preparing the hall and delicious food and for the solemn uh, guard. Thank you to our parishioners and friends for making our celebration today more wholesome and joyful by your presence. When we are gathered as a church, God makes us more profoundly His church. I just want to say a few words about our parish, which was established 84 years ago, and it was dedicated to the Holy Cross. The Feast of Exaltation of the Holy Cross is its feast. It is always celebrated on September 14th, but since it is our parish feast, we celebrate it solemnly today on Sunday. This feast commemorates the founding of the True Cross in the year 320, and later on the dedication of the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre, where the cross was found. Uh, Basilica is the church that was supported by the Emperor Constantine's mother, Helen, where she found the Holy Cross by which the lame were healed. What does the exaltation of the cross mean? To exalt means to raise, raise high, elevate, praise, or honor. When we honor or exalt the cross, Christians are primarily acknowledging Christ himself as, the, as it was said at the Second Council of Nicaea. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, the Council of Trent emphasizes the unique character of Christ's sacrifice as the source of eternal salvation and teaches that His most holy passion on the wood of the cross merited justification for us. And the Church venerates His cross as she sings, Hail, O cross, our only hope. End of quote. So let us always keep the cross, or even better, the crucifix, 
visible in our houses and workplaces so that we may be inspired by and follow Jesus who hung upon the cross. May our Lord help us carry our crosses and follow Him into eternal life. So we wish to recognize uh, uh, the principle of St. John the 23rd, King Ramis, and, and Laura Sternham, and my aunt Neva, Gordana, her daughter, and her, her husband Alex, Veronica, and Adriana Blanco. And anybody else, if I do not recognize some of the dignitaries here present, please identify yourself in the hall so that I can recognize. Thank you for coming, Your Eminence, and may God bless you always in your ministry and life.